Welcome back for another episode of Post Traumatic Thriving, where we learn all about trauma and more importantly, how to kind of get over it. I'm joined by my wonderful co-host, Tanya Brown. How are you doing, Tanya? I'm fabulous. Happy day. Everyone. Happy day. Yeah. And I've been excited all week Me about too. our guests or all week. Yeah, all week. I didn't sleep well last night. <laughs> Well, we have, you know, if you're over, I'm guessing 30, you've heard the name Joey Budafuco, Mary mm-hmm. Jo Budafuco, Amy Fisher. Right. That whole story was enormous. Unbelievable. Yes. And what's so cool about this episode is we have Jesse Budafuco in the house, mm-hmm. right here in the studio, <laughs> to talk about the issues of what it's like to be the kid right. with this. We talked about not using bad language. I don't know any of the word than a shit show. <laughs> so welcome to Jesse. Shit show of the story. Thank you for having me. I'm so yeah. happy we're to so be excited. here and the opportunity to share my story. Yeah, well, we're going to get into it. So, you know, uh, Jesse, like we were talking about before the show, we go long or short, you know, how long, however long to kind of just lay it out there. And your story is so fascinating from perspective. Nobody's ever heard it before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the first question we're going to throw at you is tell us about Jesse Budafuco, the little girl, you know, your earliest childhood memories, what your life was like, you know, t- share, share your, your perspective as a, as a little kid growing up in the Budafuco home. Great. Uh, well, first it's Budafuco. Budafuco. Like, Budafuco. But if you go to the store, you can pick me something up. While oh, you're there. Budafuco. 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 Yes. Oh, I'm it's already been, confused. It, well, I, my entire life. I do not have one trophy where my name is spelled correctly. Uh, no one's ever been ever to Why can't people just be named Bell? Oh. B-E-L-L. When, you know, when bill collectors call and they try to, hi, is Miss but uh, ooh, I've been called some things. I've been called some things that are, you know. So it's a tough name. So it's okay. You've been called worse, right? Yourself. So yeah. butafuco. 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 Yeah, it's butafuoco in Italian. Oh, no, 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 don't even. <laughs> now, I'm, now I'm lost again. Okay. Yes, butafuco. Butafuco. But yes, but the name's been butchered in the press for my entire life. So I kind of just let people go with it. But you okay. know what? I'm telling my story, so I want to make sure people know my name. I Absolutely. respect that. That's that's good. We will do that. Um, so, so back to your question of what, you know, for me, childhood didn't last very long. Um, I had nine years on this earth before the trauma hit, that which day. we'll get into next episode, so stay tuned. <laughs> um, but, you know, before that, I was lucky to have, you know, a little bit of a normal C that I think helped me become resilient when the trauma did hit and the chaos did start. Um, And so for me, that looked like, uh, you know, doing well in school. Uh, I, it was, this was early nineties. So I didn't, I had, so this is all New Jersey, uh, New York, Long Island. Oh, Long Island. Yeah. uh, On a town called Massapequa. Mm -hmm. Um, Very nice town, middle, upper class uh, on the water. I grew up on the beach. Like Tanya. Oh, nice. Uh, I grew up on boats. You know, I had my boating license young and uh, just jet skis and, and in the water and, and all that kind of stuff, yeah. very neighborhood oriented, the neighborhood I lived in. And I've never lived in a neighborhood like it. And I don't know if it was the time or the location. Everybody knew everybody. I could mm-hmm. ride my bike freely around and, hey, Jesse, hey, you know, I would ding dong ditch the neighbor. Right. Good you old know, day. <laughs> yeah. And the doors were unlocked. It was a very safe. I felt safe. Um, I was, my family was very popular in the neighborhood. We belonged to a beach club and Joey, Mary, Joe, Joey, Mary, Joe, Joey, Mary, Joe, you know, like my mom was the treasurer of the beach club and my dad was the one throwing water balloons at 4th of July, setting off fireworks, you know, and um, you know, Mrs. B, Mr. B is what all my friends called my parents. And it was a very wholesome upbringing. I didn't understand how chaotic it was for my mother. Cause even before tragedy hit, uh, my father did have addiction issues um, and which caused my mother to suffer um, anxiety and panic. Mm-hmm. And so I, I wasn't necessarily aware of that as a kid, but I just sensed something was always up. And so even before things got really crazy for me, I always felt this need to not be a problem or to uh, put on a happy face or a show. You know, I like to sing. I like to dance. I like it to entertain. So I would do that a lot as a kid. Um, you know, but it was, it was about being popular and being good in school. And, uh, you know, I did have, uh, ADD. I didn't know it ADHD as a child. Uh, sure. and so mm-hmm. 
I would get report cards like, you know, Jesse would maybe be doing better in school if she was a little less social. You know, like that. I was very Things haven't changed. Right. Um, pretty impulsive, too. I didn't now that I've done some work on myself and I've been able to look at myself as an early child, there's definitely some impulsivity issues that I never really realized. And, you know, once we get to episode three, y'all gonna see what happens. Um, but, you know, it was a very, for the most part, um, chill upbringing. I never had, we weren't necessarily poor. I always had what I wanted. If not, if anything, I had an excess because in my family, um, and we going to get started on it, but in my family, <laughs> a lot of things fell off the back of the truck pretty early. And so my dad would come home with just like presents of like <laughs> sweatshirts, but every size. Here's a water years. heater. Yeah. Like, or um, Teddy Ruck spins. I got like five of them at once. Or, you know, just like random things that just didn't belong to my dad, but necessarily didn't belong to anyone else. And so they wound up in our house. And so a lot of those like early messages of like, even if you don't have it, you can get it later kind mm -hmm. of were in my zone. And so I think it's just, I don't know. I had a lot of great memories ish from, from what I remember in terms of like safety and, and privilege and, you know, a daddy daughter dance here and there and things like that. Um, but for the most part, a lot of it was, making sure my mom was okay. And this was even before things got crazy um, because I could see what my father's behavior was doing to her. Cause he went from <clears throat> having a cocaine addiction to going to rehab when I was in like, like five or six years old. And you knew this wow. at the time? No, <clears throat> they told me he went to Disneyland. Oh, wow. <laughs> and so he'd be calling me probably with the three days. And I'd be like, how's Mickey? You know, on the phone. <laughs> not, not really knowing what's going on. Oh, wow. Oh, um, so as a kid, you didn't know about the drama going on, but you sensed something was up? or Yeah, in a weird way, yeah. Um, because of uh, my mom, we'd go food shopping and we'd have to leave with a full cart. Um, and I never understood why, but turns out she was having a panic attack and uh. we needed to go. Like little, you know, just little kind of things like that. Um, but for the most part, it was fun, you know, um, and you were an only child. No, I have an older brother. Oh, you do. I okay. Do. Okay. Yeah. But you don't hear much about him in the public space because he chooses to live his life. Okay. I will yeah. respect that. Yeah. Sure. I have okay. a sister like that too. Okay. There you go. I get it. Yeah. Totally. Okay. So you're in a, a home in Long Island, New York, mm -hmm. obviously a pretty posh place to live mm -hmm. with the ocean, lots of fun, lots of kids in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You're having a good time at school. A little too social, <laughs> in air quotes. <laughs> Bouncing off the walls is another way to put it. A little bit. <laughs> okay. But life was pretty good. Life was pretty yeah. good. Happy, joyful. Happy, joyous, and yeah. free. On the know? beach. Yeah, it really was. No complaints. You know, no one, you know, tragedy, didn't, no one died in the family. It wasn't, It was. we never got burglarized like that. Nothing like that for what the first was, nine years. What, you, you caught my attention when you said things fell off the truck, you know. Um, <laughs> did you, was there a vibe that, hey, maybe something sketchy is going on or, um, or not really? Not sketchy, but I think it instilled in me a sense of if it's not tied down, I'm entitled to it. Oh, okay. wow. Entitlement. It, like to this day, if I, to this day, if I see something, Hey, let's That's start not the right. And I was like, oh, can I fit that in my car? Or can I fit that in my purse? Are these like, microphones locked down. <laughs> but that's the joke. You can take me. the coffee cup home. Yeah, we'll give you that. <laughs> but exactly. So I don't think like that anymore, but for a long time. Um, I did just because I think that's that's kind of the cues I was given from wow. at least my, my dad. So you kind of picked up on that. Mm hmm do you think yeah. you remember it like at that age or is it everything kind of in hindsight now? No, I remember it because I loved it because I got the coolest stuff. Yeah. Like he come home with like the BK nights of like the coolest shoes with the light ups. Uh -huh. And so I'd have one in every size from here until the next, you know, <laughs> fifth grade. <laughs> okay. Because he just came up on a box of it. And so like I kept, he kept bringing things home that like made me cool. <laughs> and so wow. I was like, let's Popular. go. What else fell off the truck? Like I didn't know what it meant. So, but I was just like, what truck do you get this from? Can you get more? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, freeway. Yeah, but exactly. <laughs> I didn't understand that too well, fast, too furious part of it. So your dad would sound like he was a fun guy to hang out with. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. He's a life of the party. Very social. Very fun. As is my mom. Yeah. Funny. Okay. We're very comedic. Uh, dancing. A lot of music in our home. A lot of Steely Dan. A lot of Stray Cats. A lot of, you know. Wow. Yeah. It was the oldies. Of, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. like good. Like it was just... 
fun. You know, we always had music playing in the background and it was just always pretty lighthearted and a lot of fun. It kind of seems like your family was like the go-to home because it was like the fun home. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's something house. you guys have in I common. Really to that. All the bikes on the yeah. lawn yeah. after school. Really we had the best snack cabinet. <laughs> yep. yeah. So Joey Buda, uh, but uh, I'm going to try it. Well, you screwed it up when you start doing the other you Italian. You screwed it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. Okay. Well, I'm going to give it a try. One more that I'm going to give up. Uh, Joey, but a uh, Fuco. But a Fuco. But if you go to the store. But if you, you go, can fall and get a couple Fuco. things off the back of the okay. truck. <laughs> okay. So he was, he was a fun dude. Yeah. Very, okay. Fun. Kind of the life of the party. Yeah. And your mom the same way. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sounds pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It was. You know, it cool was. shoes, Steely yeah. Dan. And How I about Led Zeppelin? I, I got to ask about that. It's too big. Yeah. I'm sure it was in the. It's more know, sophisticated. Like 80s, this 70s. is more what I'm into. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. Uh, Stevie Ray Vaughn, Steely when, Dan. Okay. When, you okay. Said, when you said stray cats, I was like, oh, big hair. Some stray cats. <laughs> yeah. But I totally relate to your upbringing because that that is exactly, I mean, right to my right is the beach, mm -hmm. right? So, when you were mentioning that you grew up on the beach, I didn't, I didn't even know that. I thought that, you know, it was like a little small suburban town, mm -hmm. you know, maybe a little bit inland. Not, I didn't know that you grew up on the beach. Like walking distance. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I relate to that because the safety and doors unlocked. Right. That's what we used to do too. And it's just sad, but you know, the culture has totally changed everything around. It sure yeah. has. Yeah. It sure has. Wow. Okay. Wow. What yeah. about you? Where'd you grow up? Well, I grew up in Fullerton, uh, which is here in Orange County. Okay. And um, I grew up, my dad worked for Fender Guitar. Oh, cool. And mm -hmm. um, Leo Fender, who invented the electric guitar, lived two streets away. Right. And we're going to do some episodes on Mrs. Fender, sadly yes. passed away. Yeah. I wrote a book with Mrs. Fender. Okay. Yeah. But I, 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 you're, when you talked about music, that was really intriguing. The same thing, you'd take a quarter on the bus and come down to the beach. Mm -hmm. We weren't like the rich kids that lived on the beach, you two. <laughs> You know, but we were rich. <laughs> we were rich maybe back in the day. <laughs> Definitely yeah. not. We were 80, yeah. Yeah. Rich. yeah. But but yeah, I moved down here later, but um but yeah, I lived, you know, nearby. Same kind of thing, idyllic childhood. You know, my childhood trauma was I was born with a congenital heart defect. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, you know, Tanya, we know her, the whole world knows her trauma. Mm -hmm. And the whole world knows your trauma, too. Um, the whole world knows my parents' trauma. Yeah. Well, that, you the know, that's about so, to know the story. story. That's a <laughs> story. great point. Yeah. That's you know? a great point. Mm -hmm. Maybe not even the trauma, just the story. Mm -hmm. They know the story, but not the trauma that affects, you know, mom and dad and you. Yes, right? that's a great clarification. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and the statistic we kind of throw around on the, sh uh, you know, on this podcast is that by college age, 66 to 85 percent of humans have experienced a trauma. Mm -hmm. I mean, you did. All well, three mm -hmm. of us have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Mel, our producer, has, but we get the vibe. But and she's a, says, no, you're a liar. You know, but she's a longboard surfer. So she uh, is <laughs> nice. Hang ten. She's super cool. We only have cool people. Okay, you know, right? That's cool. But, um, but no, I mean, the point is we, that's a reality. 68% did you say? 66 to 85%. Wow. That's so enough. the majority that's by college age. In America or world uh i don't know if the stat came from it came from the academic literature but i don't know if it's wow. u.s or or international i think it was u.s, US but but the thing that's is enough. is that the schools don't teach us how to deal with this stuff yeah, that's i mean true. what kind of training did you go through on long island that said hey you know in case you know amy fisher shows <laughs> <Yeah>. up <laughs> what are this you is how do? you process this stuff how, absolutely you know what i mean yeah we'll get into that episode four because that's what i'm doing with my life now you know, have that i think we may have a seven episode theory right? knows. Have you like listen to episode one jesse plugs our episodes better than us <laughs> well <laughs> it took me 30 years to get to that point yeah. yeah yeah figuring out how to deal with the crap that's been put onto my plate because i never got professional yeah yeah but yeah. we're not there yet we're in episode well, one you know what? I, I think the vernacular also needs to change like dealing i i I, I learned this when I was in the psych unit where somebody, one of my therapists cleared this, clarified this for me, where it's kind of like dealing with something is like putting it under the table or under the rug and saying, okay, I'll get to that later. But it's the coping. Mm -hmm. It's like, how do I cope with, with stuff? If something comes before right. it even happens, like if something comes my way, 
how, like, how, how would I cope with something like right. that? Coping with an exam, coping with a trauma, coping with a divorce. How do we cope? Right. So I kind of like the word cope instead of deal. No, I love you know? that. Oh, cope right? versus I deal. Yeah. I didn't have any coping tools. And we'll get that to yeah, that. We're not, we're not, yeah, we're not taught that. Taught None that of us were. All. None yeah. of us were. I taught myself. Only math, geography, history. Yeah. <laughs> right now I'd see, cause I do work in education. I do work with um, early childhood education as well. well that's episode four. Okay. <laughs> Just stop yeah, right, right now. <laughs> though, yeah. For at least for children, they are starting to be taught those social emotional tools, yeah. the coping tools of, Good. of learning how to tap and calm themselves down in stressful yeah. environments, learning how Meditate. to deep breathe and yeah. like learning it in their classrooms oh, early, which good. is really, that's really nice. Cool yeah. See, cause good. I didn't have that. None you of know, us did. I, I got to tell you something. My, um, Yesterday I was in Park City. I got a little place up. I like, I, yeah, I love to ski. Have a look. Oh yeah, oh my God, he's always. There. <laughs> I got a lot of frequent flyer miles, but no, I, I live here. But uh, and there during ski season. But that's how I do my exercise in the winter. I, exercise is really critically important to me. But anyway, um, my I was with my daughter and my uh, granddaughter, who's a year and a half, and my son-in-law. It was super. There's then they went ski, they went skiing and I babysat, which I love to do. Oh, so, so it's so cool. And my daughter came back from skiing and she sat down with my granddaughter and she says, and she's one and a half. And she started going through her affirmations. I couldn't nice. believe it. Wow. She goes, so she, and her, my granddaughter's name is Ro. She's just, uh, she's the love of my life. I'm going to start crying. Oh. But, but she goes, Ro, I am kind. And Ro would say, I am kind. I am strong. I am strong. I am brave. And she started going the daily affirmations wow. at one and a half. Is That's that amazing. cool or what? That's that really awesome. Cool. But I never got that. I'm guessing you didn't. No. no. I mean, I got positive reinforcement, yeah. but I was never taught a affirmation or an affirmation or, you know, self, like my self critic is extremely negative. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my self parent is, you know, pushes me and tells me I failed. And yeah, I know I'm working on that. <laughs> we wrote <laughs> episode seven, um, <laughs> but uh, you know, I, if I maybe got those cues a little earlier in life, maybe I could have coped with my trauma. Better. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I could, you know, default to those affirmations. That's I re- beautiful. I remember my mom, when my, when I lost my best friend, Harissa, I remember she put, she would write all these affirmations on, little post-it no she even wrote something in lipstick on the mirror which oh, is like that. you just don't do right it's, uh, that's like only if you break up with somebody but i was yeah. like what is this like if, so this is in 1989 wow. and i was like what is this what are you doing like she goes just read these just you know she kept saying you are beautiful you are neat unique you are smart you are special you know i mean everywhere everywhere i could look mm-hmm. and but affirmations i had no idea like oh my god you actually have to read them and affirm them and mm-hmm. pay attention to them but at one and a half, one and a that's half. amazing. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, and we're talking about your childhood. We're talking about childhood. I mean, um, we can loop back to this, but like, as, as we're talking about your childhood, is, is there any like deficiency that you think, boy, had I grown up again, I wish this had happened or up until that day? Um, or everything was pretty cool. I mean, up until that day, I mean, I was newly nine. I was I just turned nine years right. old. So I was in third grade. Um, wow. I mean, some more of that affirmation stuff could have been helpful. Yeah. yeah. Um, but even then, I don't know if I would have been receptive It sounds to it. pretty cool. Yeah. It was the 90s. It was yeah. early 90s. So mental health. We weren't was, talking about it. No, that was, you're going to wind up in a loony bin. It was highly stigmatized. Yeah. And right. I yeah. did stigmatize it. You know, Beauty and the Beast, the main threat of Belle's father is we're going to send you to the mental institution. Right. right. She's exactly. blah, blah, blah. No. <laughs> yeah. so I can't be like him, you know? And so yeah. like, I just. Um, I never took mental. I don't think my whole family, no one in our family. No, yeah. And same thing with, health. we didn't even know what it was. Yeah. Right, and know? it was stigmatized because yeah. I had a neat, I had an aunt who, um, and this is a horrible story to repeat, but I'll just tell it the way it is. I had an aunt who died of alcoholism. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mom's side was a Hollywood family. My, my aunt was a an actress. My uncle uh, produced Gilligan's Island. So oh, wow. there's my claim to fame, but, but um, my aunt was no, in a, down in Long Beach, I think she was in an institution for people that were crazy. You know, uh, that's what we, mm-hmm. said. I'm, I'm talking right. about what yeah. we said back in the day. Right. Um, but the nut but, house. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, it was all kind of jokes and put downs. Right. Let's be real. Right. And I love going there. You know why? I want, and this is, I'm just admitting something that's a character flaw, but I love going there as a little kid because it, 
we frankly we would make fun of the people that were mentally ill. Mm-hmm. I'm just being real, mm-hmm. and and I would love to go push the recoin return button on the vending machines because they would put money in like impulsively and never buy anything. And I would get I walk home loaded <laughs> with quarters. Um, so there was no kind of directive. To, to uh, you know, in terms of a higher level of thinking, in terms of, hey, these are people that have problems and we mm-hmm. need to respect that. Yeah. It, there was none of that, you know, and the old airplane movies and the old movies made fun of mm-hmm. different people on fringes or marginalized parts of society. Yeah, absolutely. And it's interesting that while we grew up, we all three of us, I think, grew up in really fun, interesting, beach-oriented you know, families and communities yeah. that we've had to do 180 degrees in a lot of our thinking. We've had to yes. do a lot of learning yeah. and yeah. deconstructing. And, yeah. Yeah. And your trauma probably was a catalyst for that. Your trauma was, I'm yeah. sure, and oh, other absolutely. traumas. Mine too. Mm-hmm. So that, and that's why we're here is to kind of reverse some of that old ignorant thinking. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is something we're talking about now. Back in the 80s and 90s, we weren't talking about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, you know, got a got uh, on Instagram a football player from Ohio State. You know, oh, with the CT. Yeah, he. Uh, What's he, it called? I'm not too sure, the but brain he, injury. Yeah, from, oh, uh, okay. TBIs. But he he just retired. He's like, I can't, I can't yeah. go on. He says it's my mental illness, and he's really. So we're talking about this now. Mm-hmm. So let's really be vulnerable, get real. We're all a little nuts and batty. So absolutely, you know. And I think by us being so vulnerable, we're giving people a chance and opt- opportunity to like go. Well, you know what? I don't feel alone, and that's the whole purpose of the show. Exactly. Yeah. And that's why I want to participate today because I found the power in sharing your story. Because so many people have shared their story, which has helped me. And I thought keeping my story to myself uh, because there was a lot of shame and embarrassment attached to it. So I right. didn't tell anybody for a very long time. <laughs> in episode seven, you're gonna realize I lost my mind. <laughs> I think we're up to I think we're up to episode nine. <laughs> yeah, so 485, the breakdown. Uh, you know, I since then have learned. Um, um, how powerful sharing our stories. And actually, yes. before we even go further on that note, mm-hmm. while I was in a major depression, Tanya, I got, my mother gave me your book and I read it. First of all, I don't read very much because of my ADD. And I read it in like an hour because wow. every word, I was like, oh my God, that's me. Oh my God, that's <laughs> me. Like I never heard anyone talk uh. about the pressure of the paparazzi on your front lawn before. I never talked about the stigma of mental health and how Mm -hmm. I didn't get mental health help because I was afraid the inquirer was going to find out and publish a news story about it. Right. So I didn't go, you know, where I could have used it. And when you wrote about that, I'm going to start filling up. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) Like that saved my life because I didn't realize I was going through major depression. I was praying to God not to wake up in the morning. And this is just a teaser for the future episodes. Yeah. You know, it was, I never heard anyone say my story before because this random group of the 90s scandal people, uh, you know, my family was first. And, you know, unfortunately, yours came right after mine. And when the paparazzi went to your house, they left ours and my family got a reprieve. And we would be saying, you know, it sucks for what you guys are going through because we know you knew it. But also at the same time. (sighs) Yeah. My trash today. Uh, You're welcome. Thank (laughs) you. (laughs) <laughs> you know, thank Nicole. Thank Nicole. Thank you. Honestly, and it's just like it's just, and I've always felt connected to you and your family. So to be here now in this full circle Aww. moment, fully present with my mind, and like on this new path of healing and helping others, it's just like I don't know the universe. It's surreal. It's crazy. Wow. Yeah, you know, it really is. I, I, we're so grateful you yeah. are here, and I didn't realize it till this morning because the way Tanya, you talked about Jesse. That you were like besties, you know, and <laughs> this is today is the first time, but we're, we're making history because this is the first time you guys have actually physically yeah. met yeah. Absolutely. in person. And this is, I mean, it's 30 years for my trauma coming up in May. So y'all are what a couple of years behind us. Yeah. yeah. And so like, if this is a 30 year meeting in the making, this is a 28 wow. year meeting in the making. Wow. And, it was, I, and it doesn't even seem like it. It seems like. Right. right. And <laughs> I don't know if that's because of what we went through is so Perhaps. uniquely tragic, connected. but we're so connected yeah. on that. Could be. Yeah. Could be. I don't well, know. I, I don't know. I, 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 you're obviously thriving. I want to invite you to all my parties <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Because <laughs> I do but, sparkle in a crisis. But, but here's, here's a point. <laughs> Not everybody's a brown or, or, or I'm going to uh, say, you say, you but a few go. Okay. 
I, I'm going to practice during a break, <laughs> but, but, you know, but people are dealing with traumas that are just as horrible. They don't make the news, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, um, the process of trauma recovery is the same, right? Uh, it's the same pattern. Right. Um, and everybody's trauma is valid. Right. Um, sure. and the fact Absolutely. that one had, you know, one trauma hits the headline, another doesn't, you know, I was doing a case up in, um, I do economic studies on disasters. That's what my career is. Mm -hmm. And I had a case up in um, Vegas where um, it was a mafia house with, uh, it was a murder house. It's where you go to, you think you're going to a party. They were, you're really oh, going yeah, to get Austin. Yeah, that's, that was the rumor about the house. Yikes. And uh, so I, I was up there and we went to the police department and I said, okay, can you ask, can you tell us what homicides have occurred in this neighborhood? And it was like, I thought there might be one or two. I, there were like dozens that don't make the newspaper. Wow. Don't even make the wow, local yeah, news. Yeah. It, yeah. It, yeah. Unfortunately, that says something about our society. So there's, there's big time trauma mm -hmm. all everywhere. over the place. Yeah, mm -hmm. everywhere. And I think we're the first podcast that I'm aware of that really like hits it hard from the start to the end, what this process looks like yeah. to where Jesse, who went through this nightmare, didn't come out at the other end of the meat grinder, you know, pulverized, oh, came no. out to <laughs> say, <laughs> hey, <laughs> you know, we talk about the process, yeah, ground up and spit out. But, yeah. but in the end, um, you know, it's like, hey, come to our party. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, know, yeah, exactly. you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Well, I think it would have been extremely helpful for me had I, and it was helpful for me because I saw someone like me on the other side of it. And that's Tanya. Yeah. So maybe I can be that for the next person. I think that's important for humanity. Yeah. We have, we have yeah. to connect exactly. with people. Is exactly. Through great things, but also through crappy things. Yeah, and yeah. it can be on TV or it doesn't have to be on TV. But what I found is the feelings afterwards mm -hmm are is what connects us and what's similar. Like right. what you go through, what the you experience. go through, what I go through, maybe totally three different events, but we still feel, feel. the same afterwards. Right. So how do we deal with that? Right. And that's, I think, what we're coming into just as a whole yeah. And yeah. on the universe as human beings at this point. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm so glad you mentioned that because about how there's so much trauma and tragedy all throughout our streets, right? Where people go, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry you've lost your sister. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't imagine, you know, I you know, I, it, it happened to me or it happened to my neighbor. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I'm like, the only thing that makes our stories different, because there's other Joey's out there, there's right. other Jesse's and MJ's, right? right. And other Nicole's mm -hmm. and other Randy's, right? Mm -hmm. There's other people. The only thing that's different is that it hit the news. Right. That's it. And it stayed there. And it stayed there and it's still there. And it spurred a bunch of movies but, but and merch. The, and but that's, but, but that's the only thing yeah. that if I were to, if, you know, for lack of a better term, separate us from the other people, right. From mm -hmm. other people's trauma. Th that's the only thing that separates us right. is that it was public. That's it. You know, and there's more opportunity for it to be public now than when we were experiencing it in the nineties. Cause when we were going through it was very, um, you know, the media was just on TV and in newspapers. Right. Now we have social media. We have exactly. all these. So people are going viral yeah. every second of the day, but, and then they're being chewed up and spit out with no tools on how to deal with that. Exactly. And you know, and I'm going, I'm getting a master's degree now and we'll get there, but um, in media <laughs> psychology, thing. because there's no help for people yeah. that experience what we went through first and now what it's molded into with social media. Yeah. And it's like, we gotta, you know, we gotta start protecting the people. The media is a powerful force. Yeah. And I've seen it. And it brings going people the wrong Hands. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Amen to that. Very the, destructive. Yeah. yeah. And that's what Core IQ, which produces this podcast, that's what it's all about. It's life skills we're not taught in school. It's crazy. So don't come to Core IQ if you want to learn geometry. Right. Or, or you know, <laughs> right. history or math. Those are all great topics. Don't get me wrong. But core IQs for the skills we were not taught in school. Right. Life lessons. I actually took your, the core IQ assessment online. Uh -huh. Oh, you did? <laughs> you did? How'd you come like out? I didn't even do it. In every category, except for like the three foundational ones. <laughs> 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 that like set you up for productivity yeah. or something. It was like money managing. Oh. And then like the two, the, there's three that are grouped together. Okay. That were like <laughs> below the middle line. Okay. But everything else is like, girl, yes, oh. we got it. We got it. But when it comes to like cleaning up after myself, I struggle. Yeah. 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 The basic stuff. Yeah. I was like, mm, you could. that's it. That's what that's self awareness. Right. Okay. Okay. I, well, I tell I'm my kids the assessment. Well, <laughs> you yeah, take the assessment because cool. I rather you, people. I tell my kids, I rather you be even across the board, even if it's all low. Yeah. And be in balance. We're talking about balance, balance right? Rather than being really Where's spiked you? high here and really low here. That was me. You know. Yeah. And <laughs> we're working on that. <laughs> okay. Well, we all are. We all are. But yeah. it's about striking a balance. Yeah. 
uh, over all these kind of key life skills. Right. Yeah. And one of them is, and the big one, the why I'm so passionate about this whole subject is resolving trauma. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the, the crimes, the violent crimes, the drugs, the alcohol, that's all a consequence of yeah. unresolved the childhood aftermath. trauma. Yeah. So the last question I'm going to ask you in this episode, Jesse, is this, we're talking about your childhood. You're, you're a teacher or have been a teacher. Mm-hmm. What would you teach kids or what do you wish was in the curriculum in the classroom today that wasn't there as, as you experienced your childhood? Good question. Good question. Um, well, two different, my mind goes to two different places. Okay. Um, cutting the arts out of, of education is kills my heart because yeah. I found a lot of comfort in performing arts while I was going through my trauma because I could jump into the role of, of Miss Hannigan. Yeah. I didn't have to be Jesse Botafugo. And I got taught how to work with, as a team and, and work with friends and rely on people. And so just like overall, I think how help giving children opportunities to express themselves and also feel safe in that environment mm-hmm. is huge. Yeah. I think now we have a lot of um, success-driven children because I have noticed in the classrooms I've been teaching um, and as the years progress, they get worse in terms of, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do it. It wasn't my fault, blah, blah, blah. Like they have this, like oh. they need to succeed in this perfection thing that I actually can relate to because that was one of my trauma responses was I have to be perfect, perfect. and I can't cause any waves. Um, <clears throat> but with live theater, let's say, cause that's what I was teaching for 15 years. Um, I would notice like my program in particular, like go with the flow, y'all, you know, it's never going to be perfect. Even on show night, this light's going to go out. This kid's going to miss his cue. We got (laughs) to figure it out. Go on stage, you know, go with the flow and learn to rely on each other. I think we've become a nation that is very isolated Mm -hmm. with ourselves and our problems. That's why I love this podcast so much because we're talking about it and we're talking about it communally and we need more of that. And so I think a combination of providing amazing programs for kids to get back and play and discover themselves and not just shove worksheets down them and tell them to color in the lines. I think that's really helpful for them. Mm -hmm. And then I think, you know, help like what I see now is, is teaching those social emotional coping tools of how to calm yourself down when you're angry, how to apologize uh, on a playground, you know, and how to, you know, get your shovel back in the sandbox. If someone takes it, you know, things like that, just on, I think just communicating, being human. I think it's important to let kids know, like, you know, nothing's perfect. And I just, you just, you know, be you, have fun, you know, but safely and, you know, be friends. I think think you and I are able to relate to that and you too. It's like, you know, it's only probably over the past, maybe like 10 years that we're seeing kids like, you see the kids like walk out of kindergarten with like suitcases full of with books, wheels. right? With wheels and the backpacks. Like, huh. I don't even think I haven't I, seen that. Oh, you have? Oh, it's, wow. oh yeah. Every it's, kid it's has every a really kid. backpack now. It's so sad. Really? Oh, and they okay. ride on them. They sit on them and ride yeah. like, like two, two trains. I mean, kids. Yeah. Kids. Really? Babies. I mean, and I'm <laughs> yeah. telling you, I don't even think I let kids be kids. I can't right? remember. I don't exactly. exactly. Go climb, go climb a tree. Right. And I loved how you said like, I used to ding dong ditch. I used to ding dong ditch. Yeah. Yeah. It's better to get shot. To the paper houses today. Really, you, you would, would get shot. And that's Absolutely. Yeah. You know, so I'm, I'm totally able to relate to that. Mm-hmm. And also, I think, you know, we, we don't, as a culture, we are not letting kids be kids. Right. And hence, that's why we are seeing so much anxiety and depression right. and suicide with the kids. Yeah. I mean, 10 years old. We had a very two years ago or three years ago, an 11 year old or a 10 mm. year old at Nigel Hills Junior High. Mm. Because he was so depressed yeah. and suicidal and one day he took his own life. That's and it's terrifying. like, yeah. you know, it's not, it's not anybody. I am going to say this and it's kind of bold. I do believe that the education system needs to stop putting so much pressure on these kids. Absolutely. Because, you know, even the, even the young gal up in Stanford, the soccer, uh, you know, prodigy. Yeah. And, you know, you, did you hear about her? No. Okay. So the, she uh, died by suicide. Yeah, she died by oh. suicide. Oh. There was a lot of pressure on her. Um, an incident happened where she did speak up. I guess I heard her parents speak and um, she was sharing a story or the mom was saying something. She was defending a friend of hers on campus and I guess she was going to be reprimanded for it. So with the pressure of academia, with mm. the pressure of soccer, and then that, it was just too much. Hence the reason if we start teaching coping skills and these mechanisms, right, these modalities when they're young, then when they're hit with these big things, you know, not to say it's going to be easy, 
but perhaps it doesn't need to get to that Absolutely. extreme. Gives them a chance to be wow. resilient. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. You know, I, I've, your answer was brilliant, Jesse. Yeah. I, 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 you said some really profound things there. I will say that I was impressed a few years ago, well, several years ago, my son uh, was in elementary school and he was being bullied or he mm -hmm. thought he was being bullied. Uh, he hadn't seen a real bully, but <laughs> this kid was picking on him. And I went to the uh, principal, excuse me, and she was profoundly proficient at, and what she did is she called him in and the bully. Oh. And when the bully got called, called in and just kind of mm -hmm. opened the doors and let's have a conversation rather than this talk behind your back thing. When I was a kid, there was no such, you no would, such thing. Mm -hmm. you, yeah, yeah. I mean, you learned to beat up the bullies so they wouldn't, yeah. you know, stop being bullies, <laughs> right. you know, but um, it turned out the bully was being bullied, you mm -hmm. know, and that's really what's going on. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And dynamics at home too. We don't know what's going on behind their, their own homes. Right? Yeah. Right. There, there could be abuse. Mom could have lost the job. Dad could yeah. have died. We never know what goes on. Yeah, behind the yeah. Door. exactly. And it doesn't excuse the bully's behavior, Not at right. all. but it gave me an insight that two things, one is that there's more complexity to this. And secondly, I was really grateful and proud of our school system uh, it was a Laguna Beach school system. So shout out for them yeah, um, awesome. and, and kind of dealing with that. So I think, I think the school system is making some progress in some areas. Uh, I think we need to acknowledge that and, and uh, applaud them for that. Mm -hmm. But I think you're right when they're cutting back on the arts mm -hmm. and cutting back on, on the things that let kids learn how to build teamwork and play time and all that. Yeah. We're, we're yeah. really wrecking our kids uh, mm -hmm. in those departments mm -hmm. if we do that. I mean, yeah. you know, I know they can solve algebraic programs right. that would confound <laughs> Einstein, right. but that's not really. But can you present your findings in front of a group of people? No, yeah. because you never had a chance to perform. Exactly. You never got right? a chance to be creative and feel comfortable on a stage. Exactly. You know, yeah. so it's that, like you said, balance. It's Big, like yeah. Bingo. Yeah. 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 So, hey, listen, thanks for sharing your childhood. I, I cannot wait to get to these other 37 episodes. <laughs> but, but let's do it. 37. <laughs> At least. Um, but post-matic thriving, where we learn how to dive, survive, or thrive. The choice is yours. Thanks for supporting our podcast. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and follow us on your favorite social media. For books, merchandise, or to donate, visit coreiq.com. Post Traumatic Driving is produced by Core IQ, a nonprofit with a mission to teach the life skills we all need but are not taught in school. Core IQ and the Post Traumatic Driving podcast are for informational purposes only and do not provide medical or mental health advice. Always consult with your licensed medical and mental health care providers.